And the topic for our session is going to be the use of PDE5 inhibitors and early penile rehabilitation to improve the recovery of erectile function following radical prostatectomy. I'll be presenting first, uh, arguing the pro position, and Dr. Bagrodia will, will speak next, arguing for the con position. Again, these are my disclosure. So we know that erectile dysfunction is not the only sexual dysfunction following radical prostatectomy. There are other things such as orgasmic dysfunction, Peyronie's disease, penile volume loss, and also psychos sexual dysfunction that can occur following treatment for prostate cancer. With a better understanding of the anatomy, improvement of the nurse bearing techniques, robotic surgery, penile rehabilitation, are we doing better? So this is the study that they're trying to answer that question um, from the group in Memorial Sloan Kettering and what they found, um, and this is the graph, and the blue line shows the 12 month post-op and the orange line shows the two-year post-op. And it, as you can see, the, the line isn't trending upwards, okay? Um, after about a decade of this innovations in prostate cancer surgical treatment, about less than 30% of the guys says that they're back to their baseline erectile function at one year, and less than 40% of the guys had two-year post-op. So why might this be? So this is what they found. We're operating on sicker patients. As you can see, the age has gone up in the surgical patients. We're operating on sicker patients. There's a higher percentage of patients with Charleston comorbidity score greater than one. And not surprisingly, their preoperative erectile function has, is lower because we're operating on sicker and older patients. But after adjustment for all these risk factors, the line essentially is flat. Okay, so despite we made many advances, we really hasn't really made too much improvement in terms of erectile function recovery. So what are some of the predictors of recovery after radical prostatectomy? We know age preoperative pre erectile function, nurse bearing status, and their pre-existing cardiovascular risk factors. Other things such as surgeon volume and salvage treatment um, the patient require can also further impact their sexual function. This is a table showing the, some of the predictors for failure. Um, you can see many things are listed, but one of the things that's on this list is penile rehabilitation, a late start of it, more than six month post radical prostatectomy. If you start too late, it's associated with increased risk for failure to recover. So how does ED occur after radical prostatectomy? We know that many changes can occur, um, both on the neurological side and also on the vascular side. But, but whether it's vasogenic or neurogenic, tissue hypoxia is what the most accepted mechanism that leads to post-prostatectomy erectile dysfunction. With hypoxia, there can be changes to the architecture of the erectile tissue within the penis. So this is an interesting study looking at real-time penile oxygenation um, during radical prostatectomy, robotic radical prostatectomy. And you can see many steps during the surgery actually can impact, um, can lead to real-time traction of um, penile ischemia, opening of the endopelvic fascia, upper traction of the Foley catheter when you're dividing the posterior bladder neck, pedicle control, all aspects of nerve sparing, apical dissection, along with DVC control, and also at the end of a case, if you do excessive um, Foley balloon um, traction, can all lead to penile ischemia uh, on real-time oxygen monitoring. So what does this mean? What, what it happens is that there can lead to changes within the erectile tissue. In animal models of cavernous neurotomy, what they found was that there was an increased deposition of collagen, one and collagen three, and which is a higher percentage of collagen compared to the smooth muscle. And this occurred as early as on day seven after the injury was initially created. Um, in, in human biopsy, we, we saw the same thing. And this study will never be um, replicated in today. These were penile biopsies of normal men with a re normal erectile function and men following prostatectomy. As you can see on the left side, the arrow is pointing at smooth muscle. And on the right side, two-month post-radical prostatectomy, you can see that the smooth muscle has been replaced by collagen. And the idea of using PDE5 inhibitor was first tested in animal models. So this is a study looking at chronic Tadalafil administration in animal models um, after in induction of the cavernous neuronomy. And in one, uh, this is what a sham surgery looks like, about one to one ratio of smooth muscle to um, collagen. In B, this is just a ner nerve injury model alone. You can see that there's less red, more blue. 
And, but when you give the same animals a um, little bit of Tadalafil every day, after, despite after the neurological injury, you can see that some of the architecture is preserved um, with the improvement in the, in the ratio of the smooth muscle to collagen. And this is not only um, found in a histological level, it also found on a functional level. They also found that there's an improvement of the endothelial function in terms of the response to vasoactive agents. So this is the debate. I'm up against a very worthy opponent, Dr. Aditya Bagrodia. This is a picture um, from his fellowship. He trained at a very, at a, at a little hospital you might have heard of in New York City called M Memorial Sloan Kettering. He's an expert in general urinary oncology. He's currently an, an associate professor of urology. He's our GU oncology disease team leader. He's a host of a very uh, popular podcast. If you haven't checked it out yet, it's called Back Table Urology. He's gonna tell you that some of the preclinical data that I presented really doesn't equal to clinical outcome. So who cares in animal models that it works? He's gonna tell you that some of the study periods that, I, that supports using PDE5 inhibitor are really short. There's no standardized protocol, um, and both in the protocol that's used and also on outcome reporting. And he also will tell you that the benefit is not maintained after the washout period. And then he'll hit you with a one-two punch. Okay, in 2015, an international expert of sexual medicine doctors, way more famous than me, look at all the literature available and make nine recommendations on, on this topic specifically. And number seven, the, re re the recommendation says this, there's conflicting data as to whether peanut rehabilitation with PDE5 inhibitor improve recovery of spontaneous erection. So even the people that I learned from says there's conflicting data. And then he might do a mic drop or something and figure that he won the debate, okay? But if you look at this statement more closely, this is talking about recovery of spontaneous erection. So what is really the goal of post-radical prostatectomy peanut rehabilitation? Is it for recovery of spontaneous erection? Maybe for some guys, you know, that's what they want, right? They're like, this is what I used to be. I want to get my quality of life back. But perhaps it should be just to restore a patient's quality of life, okay? So there's many strategies exist currently to improve the recovery of sexual function after radical prostatectomy. It includes, we have validated questionnaires, we have pharmacokinetic uh, intervention, mechanical intervention, psychosocial intervention, and also in better management of the metabolic disease. In a 2009 survey, 87% of the urologists um, responded saying that they, they prescribed some kind of aid to help men with their sexual function after radical prostatectomy, with 95% of them using PDE5 inhibitors. So is this just everybody's doing it, so we should do it too? Or there's actually data behind it? So this is what a randomized control study shows. This idea was first um, published in 2008. Patma et al. looked at sildenafil 50 versus 100 milligrams nightly, compare that to placebo. After 11 months of treatment and follow-up, what they found was that the men receiving sildenafil had a higher recovery of erectile function and nocturnal rigidity. Mon Montorsi's group used, uh, conducted a larger study um, using ver verdenafil. They, they compared on-demand versus nightly, compared that to placebo. And what they found was that the on-demand group had a higher recovery of erectile function. Benowski et al. also looked at sildenafil and also found that the rehabilitation group had a higher recovery and then better time to recovery. McCullough compared sildenafil versus MUSE nightly, compared that to placebo, and they also showed an improved recovery and also time to re recovery. So this is the first earlier data. On the more contemporary data, the, the, the start, we start seeing some differences. Pavlov et al. look at a combination of sildenafil versus placebo with sildenafil um, on demand, and they found no difference. Montorsi repeated his initial study, this time using tadalafil, and found that there was an improvement of erectile function, however, only during treatment and not after washout period. Um, Patel et al. did the same study with the same number of patients two years later and, and found have the exact same finding. And Kim et al. essentially repeated Pavlov's study in 2013, uh, looking at sildenafil and then found no difference. And most recently, Joe et al. looked at sildenafil, 100 milligrams twice a week, early versus late de delay. Early is defined as after the catheter removal within the first three months, delay is considered more than six months out. And, wh and what they found was that the early group 
had a better recovery of erectile function. So this is a summary of the randomized control studies. In over 1,100 patients, early rehabilitation with PDE5 inhibitor has led to improvement of erectile function recovery. In, in 800 and, um, let me back up one. In 846 patients, they did find an improvement during treatment period, while 174 patients in randomized control trial shows no difference. So in conclusion, does early penile rehab with PD5 inhibitor help men recover their spontaneous erection? Maybe, okay. But how about can early penile rehabilitation improve patient quality of life? Absolutely. The studies have shown that using early rehabilitation with PD5 inhibitors improve their erectile function and, and their time to resume sexual activity with their loved ones. I, I believe in the treatment and I use this every day in my clinical practice.